everybody, my name is Kayla and today's Bible story time and I am reading from the Holy Bible and the title is The Faith of the Centurion, Matthew chapter 8 verses 5 to 13 from your Bible. So now let us start reading. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed in, and in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve you to have to come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes, and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it will be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very hour. So, that is the end of the story and now it's explaining time bible explanation so this story is after the long sermon of jesus in matthew 5 6 and 7. so this is so this is the uh, the face of the centurion and this story is actually about how to have great faith in God because we because in this story the the centurion has very great faith and a centurion exactly what is a centurion and in this story in this Bible it doesn't say that the centurion was actually a Roman it was a Roman centurion and a centurion is when is a uh, it's kind of like a general, but not exactly a general. There is many soldiers under him. There are a hundred soldiers under him. And it's, and have you ever noticed that the word centurion sounds like century? A century means 100. And you know, the word centurion and century ha is very similar because they come from the same root word. Because century means 100 and a centurion has a hundred men under him. So that is what a centurion is. So now let us start with the story. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant. He said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. So, at that time, the centurion heard about Jesus. He heard that Jesus heals the sick. He heard that Jesus, take, uh, let's just say, ter take, drives out the demons out of people's bodies. And Jesus made this lots of tons of miracles. And he heard all about this. He heard everything what Jesus had done. And he knows that Jesus can heal the sick. And his servant is paralyzed. So, so he came to Jesus because when he heard Jesus is coming to his place in Capernaum, he went to Jesus to ask for help because he knows that Jesus can heal his servant. And at that time, the Roman Empire conquered Israel. So I'm pretty sure there are people there who 
most people there in in uh, Israel don't like the Romans. They don't like the they pre I'm pretty sure they don't like the, the the Roman centurion or any or the Roman Empire because maybe be, because they make their lives hard harder and they're not that free so isn't it very unusual for a person that conquered the land as help in the people that they conquered the land they conquered isn't that very unusual like the Roman Empire conquered Israel and the Roman centurion asked help from people in the land they conquered. It's very unusual for that to happen. So, when she went to Jesus, he asked him if he can heal his servant. And he, said, he addressed Jesus as Lord. Because he said, Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. So he, the Roman centurion addressed Jesus as Lord. And Lord means owner. Like if somebody rents a house or a place, they are called the landlord. Could be so. He addressed Jesus as Lord because, he, because it's kind of like he's saying like this. Lord. The heavens of the owner of the heavens and earth. The Lord, or he could have, like, there's another way he could say it. Like, because there's so much things Jesus owns. He owns, like, Lord. Because he owns our lives. He owns the heavens and earth. And the, and the, Ro the Roman centurion addressed Jesus as Lord. Even Jesus, the Roman centurion, is part of the Roman Empire. One of the, it's the biggest empire in the world. World, and he goes to, he comes to Jesus and address him as Lord. Very, oh, it's very unusual for a Roman to call a Jew Lord. Yeah, that, that's very unlikely and unusual to happen. And he asked Jesus to help. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. That's the, in, that is how, gr that's how, that's why we should be grateful for, for God. Because God has not only provide everything for us, but not only he provides everything. He heals us with no condition. Like Jesus didn't say to the Roman centurion, Be good first, and then I will heal your, your servant. Or he didn't say, Let the Israelites be free, then I will heal the, your servant. He didn't give any condition. He said, I will go and heal him. No questions. He just said it. The centurion replied, "Lord, I do not deserve you to have you to have you come under my roof." So, he he saying, "Lord, you do not deserve to come to a low ranking low rank house because Jesus is the owner of the heavens and earth and He's very high rank. The, he's the top. He's at the top. He's number one on the top. And then, the Roman centurion is lower than Jesus. And he knows that a high rank does not deserve to come to a low rank house. It's just like this. Let's just say the Philippines, the highest the authority is the president. And the president is named Rodrigo Duterte. And in the cities, there's a mayor. So let's just say the mayor of Quezon City. The, and the president wants something to be done in Quezon City. 
The president does not go all the way to Quezon City and have a talk with the mayor because he, the president is high, he has authority. He has high authority. And then the mayor is lower than the president. So why does the, the president does not go to the mayor? The president just asks one of the secretaries or something or other people under him to go and tell them, go to the mayor and tell him, tell him I want to do something in the in Quezon City. It's like that. The president never goes to the city and go to the mayor to talk. He either he either just tell somebody to do it. He doesn't even need to call because whatever the president says, it is done. That is why he, they have the highest authority, authority in the Philippines because he is the president. It's not like the mayor is higher than the president, that the president has to go to the mayor. It's not that. So, that's why he, he said that to Jesus. Because he is under authority himself he knows about authority but just say the word and my servant will be healed so he knows if jesus just says your servant will be healed your servant is healed now or your servant is is now well it happens it his servant will already be healed it, he's already he's already feeling well he's healed and not paralyzed anymore and he's not suffering anymore so he the centurion knows the roman centurion centurion knows that jesus just say the word and it will happen because he is under authority he knows that's why it, in the next sentences it says for I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes. So they listen to the higher rank. The low rank listens to the higher rank. So let's just say this is the soldiers and this is the Roman centurion. So the soldiers are the... are listening to the Roman to the centurion centurion and the low rank has to listen to the high rank because they're higher than the low rank just like us we should be like that God is higher than us we should listen to God because there we always just stop just blame God for the problems Tell God, you are not giving up me blessings and stuff like that. So that is, we should just listen to God. Follow Him. Repent. Change our ways. Come and He comes. I say to my servant, do this and He does it. So that is the higher, that is what authority is. He, he has authority. And Jesus also has a story. So when he preaches to the Israelites, they it's effective, not like the like, not like the Pharisees or the teachers in law. They they when they preach, they they it doesn't have a effect. It's not effective on the Israelites. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished he, and said to those following him, not only astonished, he was amazed by the by his understanding of authority he was amazed astonished at how much he knows about authority so if you follow authority you will be blessed that's why we should follow the authority follow the law but because if you don't follow the law you will go to jail the police will arrest you and you go to jail so, and, but, if the, if the law is against God, disobey it. 
it's not a sin if you disobey a law that's against God. It's not a sin because you're following God. You you may asking why is it not a sin? God's law is higher than your country's law if it's against God. So might as well follow God's law instead if your country's laws are against God. Just like Daniel, the law was don't worship, only worship the king. But he still prayed and he was thrown to the lions but he did not die. So it's not a sin to go against the law if the law is against God. I tell you the truth. I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Nobody in Israel has that great of understanding of authority. No person in Israel has that great of that much faith in Jesus. Because Jesus is amazed, like astonished, like I preach to the Israelites every day, almost every day, and then the, the Israelites still don't understand authority, don't repent, and I haven't even preached to this Roman centurion, and he understands authority more than the Israelites. So he's amazed, astonished by this. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. So, even though you're not an Israelite, you can still enter the kingdom of God. Anybody can, as long as you believe in God, follow God's laws, obey all the ten laws, and just repent your ways and, and don't sin. Then that you would go to the kingdom of God. Those just follow those, and then you will go enter the kingdom of God. Just obey God. Don't disobey God. Obey Him, and you will enter the kingdom of God. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, like. <laughs> do that. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go! It will be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very hour. So because of his faith is why the servant was healed. So we should have faith just like the centurion. So now let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day that you have given us. Thank you for our blessing us with good health. Right now, I just pray for you. Help us have faith and repent because there, I know there's a lot of people out there who do not have, who do, who do not even have faith in you, oh Lord God. Right now, I just pray for we can have faith just like that Roman centurion. Amen. Love you, God, and Jesus. Sorry for all our, all, all our sins. Forgive all our sins. Amen. Love you, God, and Jesus. So that's the end of this video, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned something from this video. Goodbye, everybody!